back to another episode of Carpool Kali. I am Chris Chu, our Nice International Mar Martial Arts Nomad, here with the one and only Grandmaster Bruce Chu, also known as my father. And since I got so much love for the previous episode, I decided to do a follow-up episode of Is Your Organization Toxic? Featuring, well, you've not only been a part of several organizations, or been affiliated with, or known several, probably dozens, you also are the head of your own organization. Yeah. Organization is a misnomer or very loosely used term in my group because I ain't organized at all. I, would, I wouldn't even have one if it went for Jack Hogan. But uh, yeah, I saw your last, uh, what do you call these things? Episode. Episodes. Uh, good. So the three points I made were, I'm, I'm pretty sure I made these ones, they were that, uh, is your instructor encouraging of questions? And from the student's perspective, is your instructor encouraging of questions? Is he against cross-training and learning from other people? And is he completely into the idea that it's his way and no way else? I think those are my three points I might forget. But what, was, what was the last one you said? It's his way or no way. Always promoting himself? Yeah, always promoting himself. Yeah, that was, those are the three. So if your instructor is doing those three things, in my opinion, your organization is not going to do it very well because it's just not a good place to be. It might make a bunch of money, but are you going to have any fun? Are you going to enjoy what you're doing? Which, you know, if that's your motivation is to make a bunch of money, then sure, have at it. But a lot of this conversation sparked from the idea you told me when I was a kid, learning martial arts early on. Because we were talking about, Dad, why don't you have a lot of just jerks in your organization? And you said, because I don't let them. You kick them out. Anyone who could potentially become a problem, you kick them out. Yeah. You also yourself are not a bad person, so it trickles down. I, I think that's really not true. I don't, maybe I, I don't know why I said that. It's not that I kick them out. It's that they don't want to stay. Most people, Jack Hogan's organization, for example, the assholes just left. Some of them took them too long, but they, they, they left because they don't want to be around uh, that type of person that sees through their crap. Even if they don't believe it, they always start the conversation. What a nice man. 
that's why while he was alive, there, there were so many good people. Uh, yeah, there's going to be, we had this conversation earlier to talk about other things. There's bad apples everywhere, but eventually the apples that are bad, they get rotten and die. In other words, they just leave. Uh, I think it, it has to start by being a good person first. And, and trying to lead by example. And, and I think that's that, what you should be. It's, um, you know, the golden rule is what uh, treat others the way you want to be treated. Uh, I kind of my golden rule is not that. My golden rule is I treat people the way I'd want them to treat my mom. And I just think that's a good way to be as far as want to project the, uh, uh, a good image, being a good person, saying and doing the right things, following through, keeping your word. My dad used to say, once you die, the only thing you have left is your word. That's what people are going to remember. So I, I think those are those are important things when it comes to trying to be not toxic, surrounding yourself with like-minded people. Uh, I, I think the other thing is for me, and this could be another topic for an episode, is the difference. We, we use the term martial arts instructor, but there's a difference between teacher and instructor, in my view. In my view, an instructor is a demonstrator. He demonstrates a technique and asks you to do that and replicate and duplicate that technique. To me, a teacher, and I've had both, a teacher is someone who gives of himself and teaches more than just the technique, but teaches you the meaning behind why you do things. I think one of the 
things that I learned, again, I'll go back to Wally J, was be kind to people. He was just open and so nice. And, and, uh, people can spot the arrogance, the conceit of other people that, that, I, that we know. I don't want to be a part of the, those type of people, so uh, I, I hate talking about myself. You know that. But I, I try to be humble because I don't think I'm anybody's grandmaster or any master or anything. I sure as hell am not a master of modern or these shit. I had learned stuff every day. Look, what, two weeks ago we were, was it two weeks ago? We were with, with uh, uh, Gene uh, Shelley and the Plumbaton guys. Yeah, and, uh, those guys. Dan Loman's winter camp. I learned tons of stuff that weekend. So, yeah, the, uh, my auto mechanic, he knows more about cars than I do, but I don't call him master. This is just what I do. It doesn't mean I'm not. Well, I'll touch on that part because I know you've always hated the term master. I, I can remember. Why do you? What's the proverb you learned while you were over in China? You're only a master when all questions fall. I got questions every damn day. Uh, so, yeah, I, I don't know. But anyway, I, I, I think being a genuine person is important. And again, I learned that, like you said, from watching other people, I learned the importance of that because I saw some people I did not want to be like <laughs> and some people I want to try to be like. Um, and then also some people I took aspects of them I wanted to have and ones I didn't want to have. Not everybody's perfect. You want to be a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And I think you got to be open to uh, other things. Uh, I met a guy, don't remember his name, even though somebody just told me. I, I don't remember his name. He's a Korean guy. He's 65. He looked like he was 30. He's a former rock. He had me come in and do a seminar in Albany, Georgia, or Macon, Georgia, one of them, somewhere over there. And it was very interesting because I'll be honest with you. I'm sorry, former rock. Uh, 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 rock Marine, uh, Republic of Korean Marine, tough as nails. Um, and, I, uh, and again, not a slam, but don't do a lot of seminars in the Korean schools because they're they're closed in. And this is what he said to me. Because I asked him, I said, well, what made you? He says, because you had things to offer my students. The people that don't have you uh, are afraid you're going to steal their students. He said, you live 900 miles away. How are you going to steal my students? He goes, I want my students to be better and have the best skills at their disposal. So I bring you in because you show them things that I don't have. It was so refreshing. I just kind of like, after I picked my jaw off the floor, I said, wow, thanks. I it was, it did many seminars there. So I think being not afraid letting students and encouraging I, I tell I encourage my guys go to for example where we're headed go to the Belinda walk thing and see Grandmaster Bobby go to uh, uh, we had people come down to Dan Long go out to see other people and try other things even try different modernities. Oh, try different modernities. Try try different Filipino martial arts. Try whatever. Go to this crowd of Gaza. I don't care. Go experience it all as much as you can. Come back. Show me what you learn. Uh, I told you when you were real little about my belief in the concept of original thought. It's just to think that one guy in China and one guy in England and one guy in, in Australia didn't think of the same thing is ridiculous. And then again, what Wally J once told me is there's only a handful of techniques in the world, everything else is a variation. Look, every system has some sort of front kick, every system has a punch with either hand, every system has a block with either hand. So there's I think who said it? I look for the similarities, not the differences. And, see because everybody's built differently uh, uh, one student who's six five he and I don't 
do the same techniques, obviously. He's a foot taller and 100 pounds heavier. I'm sorry, it just doesn't work that way. So that doesn't mean he's doing it wrong. I asked Professor one time, did I do it wrong? He goes, did he hit you? I said, no. He said, did you hit him? I said, yes. And he said, no, you did, you did it right. He hit him. So that's it. But seriously, I think your three original things were, were right on. Yeah, I, I, I try to encourage people to go out and sample other things. You know, have them uh, uh, be good people first. And then uh, um, you just make sure you, you, you have a good foundation. I mean, martial arts, to me, isn't just about the kicking and punching and techniques and again I understand why commercial schools do what they do uh, and I told you this when you were, got your junior black belt or whatever the hell they called it I don't believe an 8 year old should be a black belt I just don't I, I was 13 I don't believe <laughs> that should be a black belt because to me a black belt is more just your skill and technique it's all about being the right person I think it's about uh, things that are more than just technique it, it, as, as a way of life and they just don't have the life experience to be a black belt, in my opinion. Again, we can argue all you want. That's just the way I see things. Um, but I also understand the need to pay for the rent, keep the roof over my head, feed my children. So I understand why they do it. So I'm not, I'm not begrudging them. I'm just telling you the way, how, how I feel. Um, especially coming from a system that originally had no belts. And also, you're also someone who's worked in a commercial dojo. Yes, I have. So you get both sides of the coin. That's correct. You understand what it's like to not pay for a belt and focus on the training and the life experience. We also understand, listen, sometimes you got to charge someone 180 a month for a black belt program when they're only a green belt because it helps keep the lights on. That's it. Well, it's time for sparring gear. That's an extra 140. So it's, it's a shame, but it's it was, also the reality. It was a very tough balance. And I, I had a guy once tell me, well, you should do this, 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 and this. And I looked at him and said, let me ask you a question. Because he, he, he taught at a commercial school, but he didn't do it for the money because he was already wealthy. And I said, well, if this was your only source of income, would you do it that way? And he goes, oh, hell no. I said, well, there you go. So... We can get into how to run a commercial dojo versus how to do that a separate time. That's a whole other oh hour-long yeah. conversation. Yeah. At least. But, but I think the main thing is if you could sum up be your a good three person points first. of being ahead of an organization. Three point, uh, three points, like three, huh? It's a magic number. All right, be a good person first. Be a good person first. Be a person that would make your mom and daddy proud. Right. Well, that that that's that's the key. The rest of the stuff will follow. Number two, treat everybody with respect. And, and, and treat them, like I said, I treat people the way I want you to treat my mom. Uh, the third point, if that was one and two, the third point is uh, once they have a, a fundamental, uh, that guy's gonna, a strong understanding of fundamentals then incur, uh, of your system, and then encourage them to go out and try other things. I really believe that's, that's important. Um, well, you wouldn't let me go out to other groups until I had a foundation. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't even train you until you were exactly. a black belt in at least one thing. Because it just makes it easier. It's also <laughs> partly for me. Once I had you, then you understood what a front stance is, what a punch was. Uh, I didn't have to go through all that. But yeah, I mean, you know, I, I tell people all the time, you want to get good at, at footwork and understand the science of the way the body works when you fight, like boxing. kinesthetic awareness, exactly. Go take boxing. Or even it's not getting the hit, it's sparring boxing, but uh, I don't mean cardio boxing, but I mean learn how to uh, box, go learn mid drills and pad work. I guess it's probably one of the best forms of, of martial sports there is. Oh, yeah, those two. So, yeah. So, it'd be treat others the way you know. Be a good person. Be genuine. Be a good person. Yeah. Number one. Treat everyone with respect. Yeah. 
And number three, once they get a fundamental foundation, encourage them to learn else. Yeah. Not leave you, but, and if they do, ultimately, that's up to them. That's up to them, too. But don't stop your growing. No. Yeah. What happens if you stop growing? You die. Just keep growing, keep learning, keep experimenting. I've taken things that I've seen Professor do, and they just didn't work for me the way he taught them to me. I'm not that good. There's one move in particular. We would head fake and then hit you with a stick. I'm not that good. Can't do it. The walking throw you keep telling me about. So I had to change the way I do it. Oh, the walking throw is another one. I can't do it the way he does it. I just can't. I can't remember where we were. Brian Zelensky did it to me exactly that way. I can't do it that way. I had to change the way I do it. So it's okay to, to experiment and change things. As long as you keep the, the reason... I guess it goes back to what we talked about in that, from that guy Simon Sinek, right? Start with the why. What's your end result? Your end result is you want to have good people in your organization, then be a good person. If, if, back to target weapon movement, right? If you want your target is to be uh, the most successful commercial karate school, then that's how you're going to That'll dictate what weapons you use to do that and how you go about doing that. Uh, back in the day, what was it? Uh, EFC was the finance company. Steve Lavalley, Junri, all those guys. I mean, they had great commercial success. Were there jerks in their groups? Yeah, there were. But that wasn't their goal. Their goal was to have a successful business. But then you got guys that you told me, like, why can't Cam? was a good guy and a very successful commercial commercial business. Yeah, there's exception to every rule. That dude was super nice. I've only met him a handful of times. But He's a, a killer in the community in Orlando. What a gracious man. He never once... You know, I went to some very famous guy, I'm not going to say, when I moved to California. And this is exactly how I went, oh, hi, how are you? What can I do for you? I said, oh, I, uh, I've read about you in the magazines. I just wanted to come see your school and meet you. And, good. Have you ever trained before? I said, yes. He goes, okay. And he pulled out a piece of paper and said, $800 for the first year. And I went, not even, that was it. And I was like, okay, see you later. Never went back. Um, um, but uh, Kim was not like that at all. Very nice guy. I was like, wow. Um, so, yeah. Another good example, I think, of Jim Bobby were going to go see him. But he was not Anything less than cordial, nice, treated you like family as soon as we met him for the first time. <clears throat> oh my god, yes. Super nice guy. And you're, I know you're going to hate this, but this could have been the perception of, oh, there's another Filipino grand master coming to my seminar. Who does this guy think he is? Good instead, idea. instead he was, oh, hello, welcome. Yeah, yeah. Hi. Oh, yeah. You're one of Remy's boys, that's awesome. Although, I gotta admit, I've never yet. I have very limited experience with the Balintawak people. I admit that. Very limited. But every person I've met has been a great person. Been super nice, very welcoming. Some have been technique-wise better than others, but just nice, friendly, open-armed people. So again, it all starts at the top. Well, no. <laughs> That's okay. Then you look at Jim Bobby, you go, I wonder why. Right? So, just... That's a good example. He's a great example. Good. That was very good. Because he's a great guy. Well, we're off to go see him. Yeah. And we'll see him probably in an hour. Because we're almost there. An hour away. Well, thank you. Thank Not you for pleasure. being here. I know you really didn't have a choice. You could have driven yourself, but you didn't want to do that. <laughs> so you're in my car. And, uh, yeah, thanks to you for coming on, answering these questions. Um, I asked this in the last one, if you're a student, let me know what some things you think are bad in an organization. Now, if you guys out there, let's say you're the head of an organization. Throw in your comments, see what you think is wrong with your organization, or see what's going great in your organization. Let's help each other out. That's the whole point of this stuff. It's a community. And uh, yeah, this is another episode of Carpool Kali. I will see you guys later. Later, Grandmaster Chip.